Hey there and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a brand new video. In this one we will start to tackle the solid principles of object-oriented programming and we'll start of course with the first one which is the single responsibility principle. So let's get right into it. Here we have a very very basic example but what I have thought about because I really did put a lot of thought into how I want to present this is I wanted to kind of like try to give some examples that you would probably encounter in most of the real life applications that you might uh, ever build. And this is the idea that uh, for, with which I have uh, come forward for this single responsibility principle or SRP. So let's take first a look or let's define what exactly that principle says. So that principle says that a class, a module, a method should only be responsible for one single thing, not for more, but just for one. Now, this may sound very simple because, hey, that, that that's easy. So you look into a class, into a method, and you can already say, okay, it does one thing or it does more things. Now, the thing is that when you start to develop real application, things are not always that easy and straightforward as you might think. So let's take a look at this example that we have right here. Now, let's assume that we have this kind of like user registration service that, of course, does a user registration so it registers a user now from this point of view of the business logic registering the user or from the application use case perspective registering the user actually means two things uh, or, or two different steps so the first step would be of course to add that user to the database and that's exactly what we do here in these kind of lines of code of course here we just have this SQL connection and kind of like we just simulate that we want to insert something to the database because we don't really uh, insert it right now. Now, the idea is that that's the first step. So the second step is, of course, after everything was successful or if it was successful, then we just want also to send an email message. Now, once again, this is kind of the same application use case. So we want to register a user. OK, here it is. We have to perform two steps. The first step is actually, uh, once again, to write the user in the database. The second step would be then to send an email. So from one perspective, if we take a look at this from the application use case itself, that's kind of like a single responsibility because the only responsibility that right now uh, kind of like this method uh, does is registering a user. Now, of course, this re user registration kind of like it has two parts, but it's still part of the user registration. So you might argue that actually uh, that's a single responsibility. However, the thing is that it is actually not. And there is another way to actually put this single responsibility principle. And that other way is, is that a class, a module, a method should have only one reason for change. Now, what does this actually mean? So let's assume for a second that, okay, we have coded uh, our method, our service, everything's okay. Uh, we have this user registration, which uh, conceptually actually is kind of like the same process. It has two steps, writing to a database and sending an email. And we kind of like use this type of uh, infrastructure right now. So let's assume like, hap like it happens in most of the use cases when you work for a customer or for a real application is that at a certain point, maybe someone comes to you and says, okay, hey, I don't want to really actually use the SQL connection. I would like to use Entity Framework Core instead to write things to the database, which would actually might, might make sense. So you, you as a developer would say, okay, sure, no problem. We just have to change that to actually maybe, I don't know, create DB context and use DB context to insert the user to the database. And we are done. We are happy. Everything's okay. But then two days or one week or one month after that, actually the same project manager or product owner says, um, okay, you know what? Uh, we, we want also to change the way that we are actually sending the emails because right now we have maybe purchased something like a SendGrid account or subscription and we want to use SendGrid for that. So you would say as a developer, okay, sure, no problem. You just come here, create an, a new SendGrid client and send it email with that, with that SendGrid client. Now, if we just pause a little bit and think back for just a few seconds is that, okay, some days or weeks back, we had to make a change because we wanted or somebody wanted to use Entity Framework Core instead of the SQL connection. And now we have to make a change because somebody wants actually to change kind of like the way that we send the email. And suddenly you realize that actually this method, even if from an application use case scenario, it actually performs the one thing, like re registering a user that here in this case might have two different steps. 
it actually has at least two reasons for change. So the first reason for change is if somebody wants to change something uh, in the way that we talk with the database. And the second reason for change is that uh, if we actually need to kind of like uh, change something uh, like what we would do here in in or in the way that we send the email there might even be a third reason for change if somebody comes to you and say and say hey uh, i want this user registration process to actually not have two steps but have three steps like maybe the first step is writing a database the second step is sending an email and the third step is sending a notification and then you would have to come back once again here to the service and add a new step which is once again a new reason for change so we have in these very few lines of code, like five lines of code, we have already three reasons for change. So that kind of like, it's fairly clear that it is not according to the single responsibility principle. So let's spend just a few seconds to, or maybe minutes to actually say how, how we can refactor this method right now so that it kind of like complies with the single responsibility principle. And of course, the very easy thing to do here is, okay, we have here two different concerns. The first concern is writing to a database. The second concern is actually here, uh, well, sending an email. So what we'll do here instead is, of course, we'll create for each concern a new class. And since for the database, we kind of like are writing something to the database, um, of course, that's not a full-blown repository, but uh, let's call this repository. So user repository. So that would be actually the first class that we create here. And we can uh, just come here to the user registration service and actually take everything that we have here because that's actually logic that concerns our database. And here then you can just paste this here. Of course, I would have to add the necessary usings and uh, actually everything should be fine. Now, I'm not really sure exactly what uh, the problem is right now because here we have this connection, uh, SQL connection, and this open, and I'm not sure what's the problem, cannot resolve symbol, okay. Uh, why cannot you resolve the symbol? Ah, oh, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's that happens when you record uh, at, at a very late time. So public, uh, let's say we return void, of course, um, and um, I don't know, register or add user, DB. Of course, we need a method and put everything in a method and right now it should be fine. So we have this kind of like repository and kind of like following the same procedure, we'll just add a new class. Where is it here? I uh, Or here just at the top, class interface. And uh, let's use a class here and let's call this uh, email sender. And here in this email sender, sender public, let's call it even void, uh, send email. And then we can just uh, come back here to this one, take everything that we have here and kind of like move it uh, in the email sender method that we have just created. Of course, here we'll also need to add the necessary usings and we should be good to go. So now that we have kind of like this, uh, these two different classes that handle these two different type of responsibilities, because each one actually uh, underlines a, a, a single or a one reason for change, we can actually come back here to this repository and and uh, we can even, I don't know, maybe let's try to, to refactor this a little bit. So private, uh, we want here to have read only and let's call this, um, what did we call this? Uh, user repository, let's call this repo. And yeah, let's just instantiate here one, uh, okay. Of course, we need a semicolon here and then private uh, read only. And let's call this email sender and uh, sender. And equals once again new. And uh, we should be good to go. And now the only things that we actually would need to do here in this method is simply come here and say the first step is repo dot um, add user to db. And the second step would be e uh, sender and then send email. And right now, if anybody comes to you and says, okay, I want to change the way that we talk to the database, then you don't do this here. Uh, in this class, you do this in the repository. If somebody wants actually to change something in the way that you send emails, then you change in the email sender. So right now, this class has only one reason for change. And the only reason for change for this class and method right now is for when we actually just need to add another step here to this user registration process. So no other reason for change here. And this is also, or this is also means that we 
comply right now with the single responsibility principle. Of course, probably if you are more senior and you would say, hey, but here we would actually kind of like uh, need to uh, uh, actually use uh, use uh, uh, interfaces and, and, and actually abstractions to abstract actually this user repository and the email sender, I will say, yes, you are totally right, but that's, that's here right now, not really the scope of this video because here I just wanted to take a look and concentrate on this idea of single responsibility. And in my opinion, I think that uh, we have done just that. So we can simply just not take into consideration that here we have instantiated the classes because that actually might be a good starting point for the video on dependency inversion when we will do that. So please, uh, please just bear with me, uh, be uh, or have a little bit uh, of understanding for this. I'm aware, but I guess that for this purpose of showcasing what actually single responsibility means, I guess that actually gets the work done. This being said, uh, I guess that's pretty much it. So thank you very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video and do you if you think that others might find it useful, don't be shy and share it uh, with your friends, with your peers on your so social networks or wherever you might actually see fit. And probably people that might find this useful would be very, very, very thankful for you. And I would totally appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button, also the notification bell to be notified whenever news uh, happens here on this Code Wrinkles channel. Once again, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.